Events kick off at the Happy Chicken Farm, where a guy deals with a hen that's been through more drama than a soap opera, destined for nugget dumb. But lo and behold, these nuggets aren't just chicken. They're the start of a full-blown zombie apocalypse. Who knew fast food could be so deadly? Enter our hero, Clint Hadson, a writer so enthusiastic he probably dreams in punctuation. But his day starts with a bang when he's rudely awakened by news of health authorities freaking out over last Friday's chicken shipments. Not exactly the breakfast of champions. Just when Clint thinks things can't get worse, in walks his mom, the critic extraordinaire. At first, she's all supportive, but then she unleashes a literary smackdown on his manuscript. Tough love, right? So what does Clint do? He decides to channel his frustrations into teaching summer school, because nothing says motivation like shaping young minds, right? But first, he's got to navigate the jungle that is his new workplace. Enter Fatty, the school guard with a unique way of saying hello. Got any shrooms? He asks, like it's the most normal thing in the world. Luckily, the vice principal saves Clint from mushroom interrogation, only to confiscate his phone and declare war on chaos. But it's not all bad. Acting Principal Sims welcomes Clint with open arms, ready to whip this school back into shape. And Clint? Well, he's just trying to find Mrs. Kenner's locker in a sea of chaos. Too bad Rebecca's more concerned with her rape button than helping a lost soul. Enter Wade, the guy who locked Clint in his own car. Talk about an awkward reunion. And as if things couldn't get worse, Wade calls out Clint's writing as a mashup of every story ever told. Thankfully, old friend Lucy swoops in to save the day, or so Clint thinks. Turns out, even she can't shield him from the truth. Wade's not just some random guy. He's Lucy's boyfriend. Talk about a plot twist. And just like that, Clint's day goes from bad to worse. Before Clint steps into the classroom, two kids, Patriot and his buddy, are caught teasing a sick girl. As Clint enters, they scurry back to their seats. After a brief introduction, Patriot starts acting up. Clint notices his phone, but when he tries to take it, Patriot threatens blackmail. Undeterred, Clint tells the class about his horror novel and asks Kelvin to give it a read. Meanwhile, Patriot taunts Shelley, resulting in a hair-raising altercation where she bites off his cheek. Clint rushes Patriot to the nurse, who begins treating his wound as he struggles for breath. Meanwhile, Fatty indulges in his mushrooms, sending him on a wild trip. Back with Lucy, Clint recounts the classroom chaos, finding solace in her support. Meanwhile, Patriot's friend confronts Shelley, only to suffer a scratch himself. Wade, feeling left out, watches Lucy and Clint's interaction with jealousy. As Patriot's friend transforms, chaos ensues, spreading infection among the kids. Mr. Peterson's attempt to intervene ends tragically, becoming the kid's next meal. Fatty witnesses the horror and rushes to inform Sims, who meets a grim fate himself. Doug alerts the staff to the chaos outside. Seeing Sims's demise, Wade flees into the school, leaving the playground behind. In the chaos, Tracy's attempt to call for help is thwarted by Patriot, who's now transformed too, cutting the phone lines. Wade rushes in, followed by Officer Dave, alerted by Rebecca's distress signal. The teachers are relieved to see Dave until tragedy strikes. The children attack him, mutilating his hands before Shelley delivers a fatal blow. As Wade rushes to aid Dave, Clint faces off against Patriot, narrowly escaping harm. With Patriot temporarily contained, they flee the staff room, encountering Calvin in the library. Suspicions arise, but Tracy confirms his innocence, and they seek refuge together. Wade proposes a bold plan to confront the children with violence, while Clint advocates for a stealthy approach to retrieve their phones. Lucy mediates their disagreement, and they agree to wait until 3 o'clock for parental rescue. But suddenly, Clint falls ill, showing alarming symptoms. Wade isolates him, causing tension and jealousy. At 3 o'clock, Lucy confirms Clint's well-being as a parent arrives to collect their child. The teachers desperately try to get the attention of a mother on the phone, but tragedy strikes as her son, Racer, infects his younger brother and fatally attacks her. Amidst the chaos, a seemingly uninfected girl named Tamra seeks refuge with the teachers. They rescue her just as the infected children close in, narrowly escaping. In a horrifying turn, Patriot's companion clings to Doug's leg as the teachers lock him away. Wade, overwhelmed by the situation, reacts violently shocking everyone. While Wade retreats to the washroom, Lucy takes Tamara and Kelvin to safety. 
Lucy tries to reassure the children, emphasizing their luck in avoiding bites or scratches, but Tamara reveals she's injured. As Lucy tends to her, Doug confides in Tracy and Rebecca about the need for an autopsy to understand the infection. In a heart-wrenching moment, Wade confronts Lucy, revealing his shattered feelings upon witnessing her happiness with Clint. Meanwhile, Doug conducts a grim examination of Patriot's companion's brain, revealing the grim truth. While the infected children may appear human, their brains are effectively dead. When questioned about his expertise, Doug shares a chilling detail from his own past, shedding light on his knowledge of the brain's workings. Curiosity arises among the teachers as they ponder why Clint remains uninfected. Doug's inquiry leads to a revelation. The virus targets prepubescent children. Meanwhile, Lucy spots Calvin in need of assistance, diagnosing him with diabetes and swiftly providing sugar to revive him. Amidst their discussion, the lights flicker ominously, and Lucy delivers a heart-wrenching confession to Wade. Their moment is interrupted by the approach of someone, revealed to be the janitor, Hitachi, who guides them to safety in the basement as infected children close in. With supplies scarce, Clint devises a plan to retrieve essentials from the teacher's lounge, utilizing the vents to access the principal's office where Wade's truck keys are located. Clint's small stature makes him the perfect candidate for vent exploration. Lucy insists on accompanying him, defying Wade's objections before abruptly leaving, expressing her frustration with the situation. In the lounge, Clint retrieves a chocolate bar for Calvin, while Lucy secures the keys and discovers the phones are unusable. Their covert mission is jeopardized when an infected child approaches, but Clint manages to evade detection. With the sound of the food machine attracting more infected children, Clint and Lucy narrowly escape, passing the chocolate bar to Wade and seeking refuge in the storeroom. They relay crucial information to Wade about the obstruction in the vents, strategizing their next moves amidst the escalating crisis. In a moment of panic, Tracy is calmed by Doug's decisive action. Meanwhile, Lucy and Clint share a private moment, where Clint reveals his true feelings for her, admitting he joined the school because of her. Lucy reciprocates the affection, but pulls back, mindful of her existing relationship. Expressing a desire for a distraction, Lucy suggests finding Adderall or Ritalin in the storeroom, sparking Clint's creativity. Elsewhere, Wade opens up to his colleagues, confessing his love for his job and peers. Lucy, remorseful for her earlier behavior, seeks reconciliation with Wade, apologizing for her actions and admitting her jealousy over Clint. Overhearing their conversation, Clint reassures Wade of his strength and solidarity, affirming their bond. With newfound determination, Wade rallies his friends to prepare for the impending confrontation with the infected children. Meanwhile, Clint and Lucy employ Adderall and Ritalin to incapacitate some of the children, aiding in their escape. As Wade leads the charge, they eliminate the infected with precise headshots, rescuing Clint and Lucy. Fighting their way out of the building, the teachers face a fierce onslaught from the remaining children. Wade, determined to protect his friends, holds off the attackers as they make a break for Wade's truck. Reluctantly staying behind, Wade urges Clint to care for Lucy as they depart, facing the encroaching horde alone. As the children swarm towards the truck, Clint swiftly drives his friends away. But their relief is short-lived as Patriot, hiding in the truck, launches an attack. Clint takes decisive action, dispatching Patriot with brutal force, ending the threat. Arriving in Denville, they are confronted with the grim reality of the cooties pandemic, originating from contaminated chicken. Shocked by the revelation, they recall the familiar presence of four chicken nuggets in their school's canteen. Doug sees an opportunity to create a vaccine from infected nuggets, but their escape is interrupted by the chilling sight of infected children closing in. Seeking refuge in a nearby building, they stumble upon a scene of devastation with corpses and birthday decorations. Doug secures a sample of the tainted nuggets, but they soon find themselves surrounded by more infected children. Just as the situation turns dire, Wade and Hitachi, having survived their own ordeal, come to their aid, guiding them to safety. With their path clear, Wade takes drastic measures, dousing the area with gasoline to halt the infected children's advance. As they find shelter in Fatty's van, Wade ensures their safety by eliminating the threat burning the infected children alive. 
the teachers are left grappling with the harrowing reality as they seek refuge in a place where children pose no danger.